This is Daniela. You ran out of the picture before I caught you. But I'm the queen bee. She's looking at me. Yeah, all right, Al. The queen bee. And we caught Daniela. Thank you. And take all of this and you can take it in this room. Yes. Cool. So now you know the pattern is called the Honeycomb, the honeycomb, it's so much fun. So everybody goes, okay, L, what is it that inspires you to make your quilts? Okay, I love antique quilts, that's where we're gonna start. Antique quilts, and I need two really tall people to hold up my quilts. I'm still gimpy, oh, as I look at Jill. Yay, and Linda, this is great. Okay, so remember, make lots of noise. Oh, the honeycomb. So this is actually the six-sided part, the six-sided, and step back. Good. Step back. Six sides. I'm, am I doing good now? Good. And what do we know the pattern called? Grandmother's Flower Garden. Okay. So this is what's really fun. We think that we invented fussy cuts. Fussy cuts. Okay. This is, this is for, um, for you. Okay. Can you go right in there? See all those fussy cuts? Is that amazing? Yes. Fussy cuts. So this is Julie. You guys have never met Julie. This is her. This is her virgin trip out on the camera, huh? Whoa! But anyhow, so I really love every center flower has the yellow in the middle, and then it's surrounded by a solid, and then a print, and the green represents the path that Grandma wandered all through her garden. Get it? Okay, so I looked at this and I said, this is great, but there's no way I'm going to do this. Right? 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 Yeah. You agree with me, Heather? Yes. No way. No grandmother's flower garden. But it's beautiful. It's from the 1930s. It's got a scalloped edge. Okay, so toss it. We're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Now, this is what happens to all of those grandmother oh. flower gardens. Not quite finished, <laughs> but I thought that you'd really enjoy seeing it. So sometime, whenever I have about 100 hours, maybe <laughs> I'll sew the binding on there, probably just a little piece like a, a bias tape binding, but I thought it would be really great as like a a little bed cover down at the bottom just to cross your feet. That would be perfect on a special white quilt. It would look really good. It's hand quilted. You want to see the back? Yeah. Ooh, nice, huh? Okay, we're not doing that one either. No inset seams. No do 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 pivot. Do 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 pivot. So. Oh, we got another one. This one is by Ruby McKim. This is from the 1930s. This is the English Flower Garden. It's the English Flower Garden. And the flowers are? Hexagons. 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 Again, and you know what they call it affectionately? Hexies. Just kind of say that like real sexy there. <laughs> Hexies. Hexies. That's the new buzzword out there, the hexies. So there's got three little ones in there with the, the um, stem and the pot, and it's applique. And <laughs> we're not going to do that one either. Go back where you were. Go back where I was. <laughs> okay, is this good? <laughs> okay, so this one, actually I bought this one in Julian at a little street fair. It was just great. And set together with the solid squares. Okay, that's one version of Ruby McKim's quilt. We're not doing applique. Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs> and this one was the second one that I had that I just thought I would show you. Isn't it beautiful? with the star in the center, all the hexagon flowers. They're so sexy sitting there in their pot, aren't they? 
They, she actually used all the same um, hexagons in each one of the pots. It looks good. Little trim on the basket. Hand quilting. What do you think yeah. about that, Linda? Look, Jill. That is wow. hand quilted with green quilting thread. Oh, that was brave. Isn't that brave? It's wonderful. <laughs> But it's, it's really, really great. It's a different kind of, um, a different green, too. Not quite the 30s. Maybe more like the 40s, don't you think? More like a 40s green. Does that mean she had that big board or that big frame and the quilt in it? Probably. Probably, Johnny. Oh, yeah, and look at the, look at the backing on it. It is really great. Okay, Julie, you go whoop in real close. Did you catch it? You got it. You got it? Okay, cool. See the uh, price tag? It's still <laughs> on <girls>. there. <laughs> no, it's on there so that when I'm gone, my sons know not to sell these for $5 each. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now we're getting closer to what we might do, huh? This is a cool antique, probably 1900s, early 1900s. Pardon me? Still in set scenes. Still in set scenes. But it's getting closer, don't you think? And actually, this is really an octagon. But I really like the scrappy look. All the scrappy pieces just all over it. You could um, really enjoy just looking at each one of the pieces, looking at the binding. Mm, we're getting closer, don't you think? Okay, take it away. And now you get to see what we're really going to do with our sexy hexies. Yay! Yay. Teresa did this one, and she used all patriotic fabrics. This is a new line that's coming out by Island Batiks. Island Batiks is real close to us right here in Carlsbad. We can drive right over and pick it up. So it's a new patriotic line that's coming out to benefit Operation Homefront. Any of you ever hear of Operation Homefront? You did? Yes. I'm so pleased. Okay, so Operation Homefront is all about the military. It's for wounded soldiers, soldiers that come home, soldiers with families, and they will actually pick up the tab, maybe pay the mortgage, pay the rent, uh, buy some food, help buy a car, whatever that soldier, whatever that um, person in the military needs, Operation Homefront will help. And the idea is to introduce this fabric all at the same time this summer so that every quilt shop has it, everybody can buy it. The, um, the profits will go to Operation Homefront. Cool. cool, is that cool? That's very cool, Operation Homefront. And um, it's just really fun. So that's what we did with it. Different for uh, Batik, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Very, very different. And I love the home of the free U.S., <coughs> land of the brave. Very, very fun. <laughs> I think so. And plus, there is quite a few free patterns that you can also get to go with this whole line of fabric. We did one, too, so it's really fun. Teresa did this one, so when you look at the rows, you can see down along the side, it kind of curves, and so you can see, like, on this one, the first row has no white triangles, but the second row kind of digs in, even row, and it has two white triangles. Ah, you'll get to see all of that as we go along, huh? Okay, so you have a pattern, and I want to show you. Hold on to it a minute, because I want to show you the pattern. It's for Orion. Oh, I hope you can go to it on the table. Do you want me to run over and pick it up? Nope. Okay, it's the one clear over in the side. Okay, it's on the white paper. Oh, you mean the template? Yeah, the templates. It's a pattern. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to go and pick it up? No. Do, okay, do you see it? Clear on the... Switch. Okay, switch, Eric. Yeah. It's on kind of like an angle. Anyhow, you see we're going to use a diamond to make a hexagon. And that came from... And it came from last month's pattern, last month's pattern, Girl's called Girl's Best, Best Friend. I'm going to mimic. Can you say the words now? 
<laughs> I'm not Mike. <laughs> Well, Ryan is telling me he's putting the words into my mouth. Anyhow, last month, all of you got a diamond pattern. We're going to use that to cut hexagons. And in your pattern tonight, you have a triangle. You don't have any patterns. No. Oh, my goodness. Daniela. Oh, Daniela. Well, he can show the triangle. We'll get them. Okay, there's the triangle. You guys will get. Would you get our patterns, please, sweetie? Oh, and Thank the you. Are cut off. How cool. The tips are cut off. <laughs> the tips. That's why they're so sexy. <laughs> That's a dumb line. Forget that. <laughs> okay. So, Danielle, if you, if you just pass down the aisles, that's perfect. So, that's one way we're going to get them. And now, we have another one. And I like to hold it the other way. Like, put, yeah, look at that. Cool. Up and down. A different size of hexagon. And this is what I did. Get back to my spot. Moda is pre-cutting hexagons. Yay! Ooh, is that exciting? Yes. I know, I think it's really exciting. It was these pre-cut hexagons that got me all excited. One package makes this size right here. And the other thing is that you need to cut your own triangles, okay? They come from a one and seven eighths inch strip and you need to have a triangle ruler to cut this. And that's really cool. And this one's called Happy Go Lucky. Cool? Happy Go Lucky. And I thought that was really fun. Okay, this one is Moda, but the next one is Kaufman. It's Kona. Oh, you know what? I want to stick that right on the wall. So hold on to that one. And when we're all done, Linda, just um, pin it right underneath that over there, okay? Okay, let me take this. All right. Look at this one. Isn't that fun? Aww. Aww. Isn't that cute? These are just little four-inch hexagons from Kaufman. Kona cotton. Oh, you brought them with you? Oh, did you know we were going to do them today? I knew you were doing hexagons. <laughs> so she's going to get right into it. But these were all pre-cut. And we used a special ruler to cut out the triangles. I'll show you that ruler. So it's just really, really fun. Okay, so we did, we did cutting with the uh, templates provided, pre-cut. And now you're going to love this because this is what's so much fun. This is our AccuQuilt. And I'm going to pull these out. Oh, my gosh. So much fun because these are the dies. And did you tell me you already have these? Mm -hmm. Oh, let me see the AccuQuilt girls that already have these. I am so impressed. That's really cool. Okay, so in the die for the hexagon, the largest one ends up looking like this. And this is like lap robe size. That's pretty big, huh? Uh -huh. Lap robe size. It's really fun. Okay, so I want you to notice how evenly dispersed, particularly the red is. Do you see the red? Well, Sue did this, and she had a special way of putting these um, patches together so you don't see too much red in one area. They're equally distributed. And then if you look at some, like, like the yellow, the yellow stands out too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So I'll show you that. And then it has the nice edge along the side. That's good. Okay, this is the medium size, and you also have a die that has triangles. 60 degrees equilateral triangles that are cut just to fit on this hexagon. Ooh. Okay, wanna see the middle size? Okay, pass that on, Marcia gets it. Okay, this is the middle size. <laughs> it shrunk a lot, but isn't it cute? It's just so cute. Not as cute as that is. 
Oh, okay, so Linda, can you just pick that little one up and kind of hold them together, one for each of you? And now that's the smallest one. Isn't that cute? Yes, all the leftovers. And I, I really like what Sue did. This is her label. She did like a white hexagon, and she still has to write her name in it. Cool, huh? Is that fun? So this she did with, um, she had fat quarter, she cut up all kinds of scraps and set to it, so it was really fun to do, and the binding is adorable. And this one I did, and what's so fun about this one, I did it on my, um, I did it on the AccuQuilt, but I used five inch charm squares. Oh. To make this quilt, I had four packages, and Sue actually did it for me. She cut all of those hexagons and triangles on the AccuQuilt in 20 minutes. Oh my God. So I know. Yeah. Is that fun? That is fun. Oh, yeah. That is really fun. It takes four of those packs. This, this size does. Yeah, I How took four. Um, I think there's 41. I think that I thought there were only 40, but when I counted, I had to have had at least 41. Some of them have 42. That one that you have from Kaufman, I believe, has 40, 40. 41 or so. Does that have 42? That's good. So you, so you need like 41, 42. There. Oh, yeah. Riley Blake does a smaller number. I know that. So. And 40, you just never know. It depends on how many pieces the designer puts in her line so that they can equally cut them up. So, and this one just has overall quilting. Look at the back on it. It's really cute. Isn't that pretty? I love that fabric. I know. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. All right. So, pass it on. You get any idea? So far, there's three different ways of cutting these little hexes. Oh, and this one. Now we're getting it done fast, aren't we? Okay, this one is Jaybirds. This is Julie Herman's ruler, and it is on the table. It's a really big one. I think they call, I think this is eight and a half inches from, uh, from point to point from Jaybird. And it's a really cool ruler. Now, if you don't want to do that jagged edge, all you have to do is cut one of your hexagons in half plus a quarter of an inch. See, you cut it in half and then you add on a quarter of an inch. Ah, there it is right there. Look at that big one. And why don't you just like totally pick it up and wave it in the air so people can see the size of it. Okay, pick it up. Oh, you can't? Oh, no, I meant just wave it. So you can see the size. <laughs> Hold on to it. Hold it still. That is big. Here, hand it to me, and I'm going to put it against. I took the largest hexagon that she did, and there it is right there. Yeah, the triangles are on the corner. Yes, and now on the template. Isn't that cool? That's our local gal. Smart, huh? Really fun. All right. So that one goes really quick. That one was about a quilt and a half a day. And this one Teresa did. I call it flower power. It's just so cute. It's... Um, Yellow is the center of the, or I'm sorry, green is the center of the flower. Then a little yellow star around it. The pink are the petals. And then we use like gray, kind of as a, just a shading to separate out the three flowers. And this one I'd really like right down through the middle. All right, we're doing good. There's some pins right here. Cool, good. And did we lose? Nope, we still have this one here. And there's one more on there. One more flower power. That's a lot of fun to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
cute. Really fun. And the quilting is really fun in it. It's got lots of little swirlies all through it. I really think it's, it's a lot of fun. Good. Oh, look at that. That would look as nice on the back, huh? Oh, go, Julie. Look at that. She's got all those. Or is that Orion? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> He's got all the moves, huh? Cool. Great. So what do you think of the Hexy show? Was it sexy enough for you? Huh? Sexy, sexy. Okay, now you have your patterns. Good? Why don't you open up your patterns? Just open them up. Let's see what you got. And here comes Orion. Good deal. We're ready for action. Ah, so what I just explained to you. See, do you remember? The one in the front. The one in the front came from a... It, it was honeycomb. It's pre-cut. Pre-cut. Pre-cut with strips. Okay, and then go in the inside. And the first one is the patriotic. And Teresa cut this with these two rulers. With the um, diamond that we're going to turn into a hexagon. And you find this, for all the block party people, you find this in... Last month's, last month's pattern. I figured that you could share pattern, share templates, right? But look, now you have an all new one. And this one is, it's kind of hard to see. Can you see it? Yep. The little triangle, you all have it in your package, in your pattern? Yep. Good deal. Okay, so I want to work on a baby quilt. In using the templates that have been provided, this is the least expensive way. You already got the templates, you got the pattern, you can do it just with those two things. I'm following the baby quilt column. The quilt will be 32 by 36. Um, you need 59 hexagons. Um, and actually, we got them from quarter yard pieces, 12 one fourth yard pieces, and all those were cut into four and a half inch strips. Okay, want to see it? So, this is what I did. Okay, so how many layers can you easily cut? Like four, four that's what I like. Okay, four divided into 12 makes three, three stacks. I did three stacks, and you need to have a fold pressed in on the top stack, on the top layer. Can you see the fold in this? I thought, oh, I don't have to do all of the pressing. Just do the top layers. Very smart. That's why I do all these before I tell you to do it. Okay. And so let's, we're going to just go ahead and cut these up. So turn over to page four. And before you do any cutting... Take your template and with a permanent marking pen, draw a line from corner to corner. You know, if, if you think that it's going to bother you on your um, diamonds or girl's best friend, girl's best friend, you could use glow line. Or you could put Invisigrip and put it on top of the Invisigrip. You could. You could put Invisigrip and just put the line on the Invisigrip. Then when you pull it away, your ruler would be all plain. Or you can just eyeball it because it's a point is a point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So I have each one of these layers all stacked up. I've got three layers. The top one has... A fold. Does the fold show up? Yeah, you can really see it good. So just take your diamond, and it's best to use full-length strips. I just cut mine down so it would be more convenient on my mat because I wanted to get it done quickly. Okay, so just put your diamond toward the left end and just make a cut. And this part right here, this is like kind of hard. You, you just have to turn so weird so I 
Yes, besides I'm gimpy. So just turn and <laughs> cut. I'm still gimpy. And so this, this is extra. And then all you have to do is just go right across your strip and cut diamonds the whole way across, okay? So I'm just gonna cut two and then just wanna go to the next one. Okay, how am I doing? Ask me questions. One cut. Can we come in and use the acupuncture? Yes, you can. I was gonna tell you that, but Yvette, thank you for asking. You know, um, we do sell them. We'd love it if you buy your own. <laughs> but you're welcome to come in and, and use ours. There is um, a small service charge because we, yeah, we have, that's what they told me. Oh, you like Orion's price better? Should we do it just for once? Maybe we should just tell everybody, you know, it's just like drugs. The first time is free. The next time you pay. Should we do that? Fine with me. Yes, if it becomes addicted, then you know where to buy yours, right? And you really, okay, so we'll put it out. We'll tell the girls, it's free the first time for you to cut all your hexes. Okay. Take that one. Make an appointment or just come um, We're going to have a table set up in the studio, and I don't think that's going to be so busy that you have to make an appointment. All right. So I got diamonds cut, right? Good. All right. The magic. The turnable. Great tool. I'm just going to stack these all up because we did that so good. I'm trying to keep my act clean. Aren't you amazed? Okay, so now we are all ready on the top of page five. I'm just going to put my uh, stack of diamonds on my uh, mat. Take that line that you drew and put it on the fold. Cool. cool. The pattern with the leftover time. There you go, Sally. Ta-da! 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 And now we have. Hexagons. Woo! Sexy hexagons! Hexies. Hexies are hexies. Don't get rid of these. I, I know I'll figure it out yet. I'm working on it. Um, they're too small, but I'll show you how. Ooh, we have this other hexagon. I think I have it figured out. But we can cut a smaller size hexagon, and I thought just like a plain one. Well, I did it, but it's not quite the right size yet. But let me see. Oh, let me look in my mess. I was all organized, and it's already lost. Okay, so this is my idea, project bag, get it? So this is what I thought, if we could just find the right size, then we could go ahead and cut it off in a print, and then we can go ahead and sew our little colors onto our white. Yes! Save these! Yes, like snowballs, it would be really cute. I think it's going to be really cute. Okay, we're going to get that done, but just not tonight. We've got enough to do. <laughs> um, that's where a swirling star came from. Okay, so that's one stack. That's good, and I'm just going to keep on cutting. Okay, so what do you think? Is this pretty easy or what? Yeah. I think it's very easy, and what I'm really worried about is that people are all going to call and say, I'm supposed to be making hexagons and there's a diamond in my pattern. <laughs> so we're going to say, read your pattern. <laughs> read the directions. Yeah, so you can just keep on going down through. These are so cute. These are little Riley Blakes. Okay, I have one more. I'm just going to do the stacks just to there. Swing it around. No contorting. That's the problem when you have these, right? You contort yourself. Okay, I'm happy. I've got those all done. The hexagons, and now 
the triangles. So this is how you figure out what size triangle to make, okay? So you, um, here's a little paper for you, a little extra paper. See if you can find that, Danielle. <laughs> they didn't give it to you. See, ask them if they have the um, little paper, the extra paper that I made for everybody that says how to figure out any size triangle. Okay, you measure one side. You measure a side, and I'm going to put it right down in this corner. Measure a side, and this side looks to be what size? It looks a little large. Let me, I'm going to turn it around. So this is what I really want you to see. The size of a side is two and a half. And, a half. and so to make your triangles, you cut two and a half inch strips, two and a half inch. And your triangles are always going to be blunt. That's what you really want, blunt triangles. So this is a two and a half inch strip. Your template that's in your um, pattern is for the two and a half inch. These two work together, okay? The diamond and the triangle work together. Nothing? No? I got blank stairs. <laughs> ah! we'll oh. Later. It's okay. We'll get him. It's not a big deal. I just told you what you're supposed to do, so. Okay, so you start on the left end. You can layer cut, and you just put your triangle. I'm right on page five. You with me? Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm only going to do one, and then Orion's going to cut some for me. Right? Or none. <laughs> okay, so. And then for this one, I'll just, I'm going to try to do one. I was not doing very well. There's the other one. And you've got the little corner there. I'm going to take these. I'm not saving these little guys. I'm going to go on. <laughs> I'm going to throw them away. And I think it's, it's not so bad to cross over and cut the tips on the opposite side. So now, the corners are cut off on all three of them. Ooh, ooh. And then you should just go ahead and turn them all so they're right side up. Turn them all right side up. And it doesn't say that, turn them right side up, but it would be really cool if you did. All right. And I, I do have a whole stack. Yes, somebody has a question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Should I be moving over a little bit? Oh, let's see if I can do it. Ooh, let me see if I can do it. Let's see, Julie, see if we can get Orion. Um, I don't even know where the... Just keep with your lesson. Okay. Is that good enough? Okay, I can't figure out which is, where's the zoom in. <laughs> I have specific jobs around here. I'm not supposed to be running the camera, too. Fine, Heather. He's good. He volunteered to come to all of your homes and cut your little tips off. <laughs> He's a good boy. Okay. I'm trying to get it for you. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I've got enough now. I got a nice stack. I got a really nice Milk stack. Good. I'm good. So it tells you it's really, it's really like shocking whenever you say for a baby quilt, how many triangles do you need? 120. 120, but you can stack them up. You can put uh, four layers at once, and you get 22. 22 times four is how many already? That's not bad. You can get them really quick. All right, so now I'm just going to put my um, hexes here, and I'm going to turn the page. Beep. All right. So, it says, turn them so that you put the um, 
uh, straight edges, the straight of the grain. See right down here? And I stack these all up so that these are on the straight of the grain. Let me turn it one more time. Okay? All right, now comes the magic. Take your first hexi. Take your triangle, flip it right sides together. Just line up those little outside edges and now go, ooh, looking good. How about that? No, let it hang over so much. You know how that is. You let your tip hang out and all that stuff. You don't have to do it on this one. You just match up your outside edges. Definitely use a quarter inch seam. Don't use a, a scant quarter on this. This is all meant to work with quarter inch seams. Okay, so now just pick it up. Yeah, I lost my scissors on the floor. So every hexagon in this quilt has at least one triangle sewn to it. So you might as well just make your stack, just sit down, pedal to the metal, keep on flipping those right sides together. If they don't exactly line up, your stiletto is invaluable. So you just kind of like pull on one, you just pull on it, stretch it, make it to meet, right? Do you guys ever have to do that? Yes, stretch it to meet. All right, I'm coming good, huh? How's that? Easy? Okay, I don't hear your O's and O's. Ooh. Pardon me? You come back the other way. Go back the other way? All right, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so um, if you look at the bottom of page six, it says count out two hexagons for the first and last patches of the odd rows. What's row number one? Odd. odd. Okay, so I want you to look up here. Let me see. This is actually what we did. Right here in the first row, this is the patch right here. And all this one has is how many um, triangles? One. Beginning and at the end, it has the last one also only has one. So just take a stack. What I did was I put one of every color in a stack. I've got my sewing all done. You should be really impressed. I'm very impressed with myself. Okay, so we already did page six, right? Okay, so now we look at page seven. So now we're just going to, I'm not even going to um, press these or clip them apart. I'm still going to do assembly line sewing. So I'm just going to... Flip them over and sew hexagons to the opposite side. <laughs> I know I'm trying to fall on the floor for you. <laughs> I missed. Okay, is it hot? Get it hot. All right. So now we just turn it around. We are going to work on our um, putting the triangle on the second side and both odd and even rows, the whole body of it is made exactly like this. Straight seams. No starting and stopping. No pivoting in the middle. Yay. Is that fun or what? Whenever I went to Portland to quilt market just recently, um, I walked in all of the booths. I looked in all the booths and you cannot believe nearly every artist, designer, had done a zigzag quilt and a hexi quilt. It's all the rage. It's all the rage. But I looked and I said, I don't want to do some of those hexagons. It looks like too much work for me. I like the way this, is, this goes. All right, so now we've got two 
hexagons on each side like that looking good okay so I'm just gonna just lay these on the ironing mat did did you get it hot Orion Whoa. you think so okay so it's really cool if you don't get this a mess a mess <laughs> when you work like this you know how you can lift it up and it's all uh, twang twangled twangled and twangled it's all twangled and all twisted um, at that point you really have to cut it apart and do one separately but if you can keep it all lined up like this and just um, set the seam and just go down and open them up yeah I did put some in I just now turned on the steam we're gonna get steam one side and then just go down and go to the other side good so it's nice variety. I even forgot to show you my 12 different fabrics. Show them all lined up there, Orion. It was really fun. And then you just clip them apart. Oh, yeah, go across the bottom. All the fabrics. As soon as I get. Okay. As soon as Eric switches. Ooh, isn't that pretty? So I just went out and they were just kind of all together. It's like a line and there's 12 different colors. There's like um, three greens, three turquoise, a couple of yellow, a couple of red. Got to have red. All right, so now we did what's on page seven. Yes? Yes. Yep. Okay, so beep, turn the page. Are you with me? Yep. Okay. Now we're doing even number rows, even number rows, and that would be what? Two. Two? Two? two. 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 <laughs> you got it. So now this one's a little different. The beginning of the second row, there's the two plus a third triangle. There's a third triangle at the beginning and at the end. So in the top row, in the odd row, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in this row, you only have six. six. You only have six. And that's how, when they're all sewn together, you start to get that in and out look. It's really fun. So are you impressed? They're all done. I am impressed. I am very impressed. And so I thought about it. Maybe, maybe somebody could come here and hold these for me. Who can't wait to hold them? Oh, thank you, Claudia. <laughs> so Sue had this idea. How many of you have a design wall? Oh, oh, you're lucky. But what if you don't have a really big one? If you come over on this side, yeah. Okay, so we took and we arranged all of these in an order. There's 12 different pieces. So we laid them out so each color was different. I mean, each, you know, there weren't two colors next to each other. So we went... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so look at this. This is corresponds. One, two, three. See what she's got? So, and then that's seven. Then we start eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we start all over again. This is one. Okay, so if this is one then we have to go to two. Ah, so there is two, and they are pretty close. Remember, this is the beginning of an odd row, only one, okay? That's two, and then we're gonna do three. Yeah, I think we need to have more, more colors. They're too close to each other, huh? And then, Four. Okay, I need one. So this one. So you see how it's going? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you number them like Sue did? Because I didn't. Sue had fifteen. Okay, and so, oh, I just I didn't have time. But we have her paper here. So 
<laughs> so they're kind of close together, huh? Well, now you have two grays next to each other and two greens next to two reds. And this isn't working out very good, is it? <laughs> it was a good idea. Scratch this idea. <laughs> Let's look at Sue's. Sue's is really nice. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> Do you remember whenever I showed you Sue's quilt and I said that? Notice how the reds were evenly distributed. Yeah. She had 15 colors and it worked better. And I only have 12. Wow. Makes a difference. It makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. It's kind of too close together. But anyhow, you get the idea. You lay out all of your blocks. Look at this, Orion. <laughs> you lay out all of your blocks. Oh, you can hardly even see that. Page 11. You look in your book. Yes, what a great idea. Look in your book. And notice how the odd rows, thank you, Claudia. We tried, but it didn't work. But anyhow, um, pardon me? Maybe it was just in there backwards. No, I did it right. I did it right. So this was one, two, three, four, five. To see, it was exactly following this. But they're too close to each other. Mm -hmm. But it's a good idea. So if you lay them out, and just remember, the odd row is actually the longer row. Then the even row is shorter. And it's got the two triangles on the ends. Can you see that in your book? Yes. Good. Yes. All right. So we have another one. Maybe Orion could just put the camera on and... Um, See, I have pieces for you, Orion, if you want to try. Okay, so this is the first row. It's already sewn together. I want to sew the second row, and I sew in pairs. So just take this one, flip it right sides together, skip, make the next pair, make the next pair, so I have three pairs, so I don't have to keep on running back and forth. First pair, second pair, third pair. And then you carefully walk to your sewing machine and you make sure that you don't twist or turn them or drop them. <laughs> You've all been there, right? Yes. You've all been there. All right, so. The pieces do not lock together. They don't lock together, but there is a match point. Okay, don't worry about it. They still lock together. So I want you to look. Let me see. We've got it laid out in page 12, at right beside three and four. It tells you how to match your seams. Okay. And I'm talking about this seam right here. This seam right here. And if he can go, Ryan can go really close. You line up right here on the outside edge. That's a given, right? Then you come to this seam and they don't lock, but they lay right on top of each other. Can you see that? Can you see how they're just on top of each other? Here and here. You have four. Four. Two here. Oh, no, six. Yeah. But it's not hard to go through, Handy. It's pretty amazing. It's not hard to go through. Okay, let's just see. Okay, at this point, this is when you want to hold your tongue just right. Don't you know how hard that is? Okay, needle down. Okay, using my quarter inch seam, line it up right at the top. And then, let's see. So go right here, and the seams are on top of each other. And just hold them down with your stiletto. Okay, and then down at the end here, again, they're gonna be all lined up. That's the beauty of cutting off those tips. No more tips. Get rid of your, cut off your tips. Okay, let's pick up the next one and line it up at the top. And um, 
just, if you have to, you can give it a little tug so they're sitting on top of each other. Use your stiletto to hold it down. And then right here, I'm lining it up so that the triangle, the end of the triangle lines up with the hexagon. And actually, it's not hard to do. No pins, no stressing, just do it. Okay, so this one's the last one in the row. Only six in the row. So um, the pattern tells you how many, um, how many hexagons, how many triangles. Basically, you need two triangles for every hexagon. If you guys go out searching on your own, or working on your own. Okay, I get to look. Don't look, Orion. Let me cut my threads. And I will tell you, ooh. Ooh. Let's see the other one. <laughs> Usually I put my finger right over what I don't want him to look at. Okay, I'll look at this one. Let me see. Darn it. You know why? I'll tell you why. Look how crooked I got at that seam. See it crooked? Not really a quarter of an inch either, is it, right? Okay, let's look. Let's see. It doesn't really match perfect now. Let's sew it again. I know. Wait, I want to show you the miracle. I, I had to show you the first to how bad it looked, right? But now I'm going to sew it over again and really sew it with a quarter of an inch seam. I was talking too much. Okay, now I'm straight. You think this is funny, huh? Okay, see, I did it again. I did it straight. Is it right on? That's why. You're supposed to sew straight. Okay, I'll, get, I'll look at the third one. Yes, you do. Look, that's good, huh? That's really good. So now you've got pairs, so then you just go. You have to make sure you keep your pairs all together. And so then you just do another seam. You know, um, Jill and I just got back from Ireland. Lots of fun. And she asked me how jet lag was. Oh, my gosh. I was wondering when, because it's eight hours different, I was wondering if I was going to be able to get up on Sunday morning, but I could. And I just have a few pictures here to show you. There's tons of pictures, but I just thought you would enjoy a few of them. We, um, oh God, I can't even think of the place we were. Where did we go to the college? In Galway? Galway, in Galway. It was pretty south. It was like southwest. <laughs> and so throughout the campus, they had all of these little funny things for you to stick your head in and take your pictures. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Looks real, huh? And so let's see. Oh, isn't that beautiful? And this is the Cliffs of Mayer, right? Cliff of Mayer, Cliffs of Mayer. Isn't that beautiful? Ireland looks just like you see it in the papers with it looks all the. Like a cliff. Yeah, Cliffs of Moor. What did I say? Moor. That's close. To the you place. guys are talking. Oh, you know you've close. been there. Beautiful. Okay, where is this now? That's close to Moor. Yeah, and that's that's one of the little. Um, <laughs> um, this is the, one of the little cat class castles. Um, Nicole Kidman did um, Up, Up, and Away. This was the beginning. Far and Away. Far and Away. Up, Up, and Away. <laughs> I know what that one is. That's the kids movie <laughs> with the balloons and everything. But anyhow, Nicole Kidman and what, what's her, what was that guy's name? <laughs> Tom Cruise. Well, they had a little um, trailer there. I guess there were hundreds of people all over that cliff. And that's where the opening took place. 
and that's whenever they decide to come to the United States. Remember something like that? Okay, this was really fun. I want to talk to you about leprechauns. I was supposed to be showing you this. If I lay it flat, can I keep on sewing? Mm, we, let them switch first. And... Okay. You can't see the leprechauns? Oh, the leprechaun. So we're all talking about the leprechauns, and we think they're so cool. And our bus driver said, look. The leprechaun, he's a nasty old man. He has his pot of gold and he doesn't share it with anybody. He said, no, no, you don't like leprechauns. And he said, and, and the lady that you don't like is the banshee. You don't like banshees either, but they love the fairies. The flowers were beautiful. They were just gorgeous. And this is like on a whitewashed wall. The houses... Some of them still have thatched roofs, whitewashed walls, bright, clean-looking, green, sheep everywhere. I love the sheep. They had the cows, the rock fences, and this, the cars aren't that great, but anyhow, this is just really what some of the houses still look like, the little towns that... Pardon me? <laughs> oh, yeah, the pubs. The pubs. Everybody asked me if I went in a pub, but I didn't. Did you go? Did you hang out in the pubs, Jill? I did. You, you did? Well, they serve potatoes every meal, at least one way of a potato, sometimes two potato dishes, sometimes three potato dishes and this is the amazing thing they have to import 90 percent of their potatoes do you believe that isn't that something but anyhow it was really fun we went on a um, bus tour okay so you can see how i um just chain stitched these together chained them just kept on lining them up and now I'm just going to cut them apart. Ooh, it's perfect. Yay. It really is, huh? Okay, now you take your row from the first block and just start at the first block. And the rows that you just put in, the seams you just put in, just press all away from block number one. And it is amazing how these are going to lay together. It would really help if we had a hot iron, but <laughs> we'll just do it again. You get the idea. This is just full of you get the ideas, huh? So now I can just go back the other way. All right. Row two. Row one, right? So now see how every hexagon matches a triangle okay is that cool yes. and you just repeat these two rows now odd even odd even odd even just go the whole way down okay so let's flip it right sides together and so you're going oh no matching the rows together they also do not lock but they do the same sort of thing where the seams are um, lined up on top of each other. So what do you think? Are they easier than you thought? Yeah. Yes. Good. After you get everything cut out. Oh, but yet we're going to see the AccuQuilt. The AccuQuilt is next. Okay, so once again, you put the seams on top of each other, and it alternates. The first seam, the seam goes on top of each other, but the second seam right here, it's like a Y. It makes a Y. If I can show you, see how it's going to cross like a Y right here? It crosses like a Y, but you still line up the outside. You line up here and here. Can you see where the little threads are here and here? You just make that Y, and then you can just pedal and go right across there. So get these lined up if you have to. Pull on it. Put your foot on it. Stretch it to meet. Get it all lined up. 
questions. How are we doing? Good. Good. Upstairs. Do I have all? Oh, um, maybe I have a big box. Um, right now I'm not. I'm. They all press down. None of them lock together, but they lay on top of each other and they both press down. And it's, it's pretty amazing. Just, I don't know, they lay really nice. All except the one that I just now did. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? Um, you know what? You can look at this one handy whenever I get it done because I'm nearly there. But first, we will look and see if it matches. And if you're lucky, you don't have to use red thread. All right. Now, if you don't want to do that fancy outside edge, you don't have to. You just cut your blocks in half and make sure you use a quarter of an inch. Okay, one more. Um, get that lined up. Line up the notches, make it great. Okay, let us look. See? I love it when they match. Ooh, ooh, oh my gosh. All right, Orion. This is amazing. All right, you can show them. <laughs> well, they're not pulled tight, so. They're not pulled tight. Ooh, ooh is that good? Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous? Thank you. <laughs> Fabulous. So it's, it's not really hard to do. I, I, it's just really addictive. This is the first time I've ever worked with hexagons, and I've enjoyed it so much. It's like I have all of these other ideas that I want to do and um, just try different things. I think we might have part two of this lesson, but not next month. Would that be fun? Yeah. Part two of the same lesson. Okay, so now you just press from the odd row down to um, the bottom. Just start at the top and press down. Get some steam rolling, get this baby hot. See, I can't even hold my steam iron. This is tragic. Ah, do it from the right side. It's good, it's good, it's good, honestly, it's good. Oh. Wow, wow, so I'm just going to stick it up there, and you guys can look at it as close as you want. Very, very, very. Oh. Cool. I like it. You like it? You know what's really fun? It's different because this is the first time that we ever worked with this, and so it's just really, really fun to do. All right, I'm going to pick up some of this stuff, and I'm going to show you some of the other ones. Oh, switch, Eric, switch. Okay, so hexagon, hexagon. This is what I really want to emphasize, that this triangle that's in your kit does not fit on this strip. It's too small. So don't call us and tell us it's too small. <laughs> you need to use a different triangle. And... Where did you get that triangle? Well, that's why you can't. You can't. <laughs> that was a tough question. They are out of stock until July. I can wait. You can wait? I already have it. Yeah, okay, fine, Peggy. You're in good shape. Okay, so... How do you figure out how to cut your triangle? What do you do? Measure. Measure one of the sides. Yeah, okay. So it's actually, we cut the strips at, one, at two and seven eighths. Two and seven eighths. 
because we thought that would work really good. Okay, so you do take this really cool um, triangle. It's by Easy. This is a 60 degree equilateral triangle. Um, two and seven eighths is just slightly less than three. three. So I usually have glow line tape, but see right along there? You can go ahead and um, just put glow line tape there, cut up. See how it's blunt on the top? We're making um, all the tops blunt. Now, you do have to trim those, or you don't. You know what, if you don't wanna do it, it's fine, because you'll just trim it later. But you can take this little triangle and slip it right up in there, and you can just cut off your corners. Ta-da! And then turn it around. And ta-da! Yeah? And let's see if it fits. Let's see if it fits. Ooh! That's good. And you have a yardage chart on page, let me see, on page 16. And it tells you, it shows you the quilt that was made from that. Oh, but wait, there's more. I feel like I'm selling Vegematics. <laughs> so Orion told me that a lot of people called. They were all excited because they said that little triangle didn't fit the pre-cut. So guess what I had Martha do? Just guess what I had Martha do? Make kits. Make little kits. This is a different one. There's three different pre-cuts from Moda. This is very cute. It's called Simply Style. Look what Martha did for you. Oh, she's so clever. She cut the triangles for you. This is the little binding in here um, with the, the three pieces all together. You can make that size quilt right there. You don't need anything else but the backing and the batting. And the price is $24.50. Is that good? You could go home tonight and make it. <laughs> you could if you could stay awake. I thought this one was really cute. You know what this one looks like. And then there's one more. We went crazy. We thought this one was really very country looking with um, all of the uh, browns, dark colors, really fun. And a lot of beige in here. And so instead of using like a beige triangle, we did. Oh, nice. Is that nice? So it's getting to be a lot of fun. Now, this morning, um, Joan took colors very similar to this, and she did a little table runner that was just three across in the odd, three. Two, three, two, three, two. It was adorable. I, want to ha I wanted to have it. Okay, so let's put all these aside. You get that? You know this doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Okay, so don't, don't try that. And don't call Ryan to tell him it doesn't work because he knows it. Okay, so you go, oh, this, this is so hot. This is so fun. I want to make all different sizes of hexagons, right? So then we have this ruler. This is a different one. And, <coughs> and in my magic drawer, if I could just find what I prepared for you. I hate this. I spend so much time getting organized and then I can't find it. Ah, <coughs> this goes along with your sheet that you got. And let's just say, they did get it. You did get it, didn't you? Yes. Okay, this is for cutting any size from one and a half up to five and a half. And so you just decide whatever size you want to make. And let's just say you want to do a two and a half inch hexagon. So you cut a two and a half inch strip, two and a half inch strip. And if you can go real close, there it says, Two and a half, two and a half. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Give it a little, yeah. Okay? All right. So make sure you slide it over enough so that you miss the salvage. 
and you just go like this, cut it up and across. Then you just take your fabric, turn it around the other way, put two and a half on the left edge, line it up two and a half there, and all you have, one more time, is your right side. And there's your sexy hexy. So you just cut you just cut the strip size that you want. Okay, now what do you do? Now you gotta cut triangle, so you measure a side, and what do you think the measurement is? One and a half. One and a half. Voila, aren't you impressed? I am too. <laughs> Okay, so this is just a really little guy, but this ruler does have a one and a half inch line. It has the blunt top. I think these would be so cute in doll clothes, don't you? Ah, so turn it around. It's hard for me, but let's just see. So you could cut these off, but let's just go for it. Maybe not so good, but anyhow, <laughs> I tried. So let's just see. Whoa, funky, funky. <laughs> when in doubt, use your ruler. Use your ruler, that's what it's meant for. But anyhow, that's cute, huh? So now you know the, um, you know the, the system, you know the number, so you re remember that really big one from Julie? Look at this, you can do all kinds of them. You can just figure out, she used that really big one, that's what you, you put the triangle on. So every size has a different size little triangle. Good. All right. Yay! Yay! We're doing good. Do you want to see the Accu quilt? Yes. yes. How about we just put it all on here and I'll just remove this. Okay, just remove that. Let's hope we don't need anything on there. Good. Far. We're doing good. See, we spent hours getting organized and look what we do. Okay, so. We have our dies. So there's two dies that work together. Oops, my mess is right here. Now, of course we're trying to sell you an AccuQuilt, right? Because we love it. How many people have one and love it? One. See, how many? One, you have two. And so maybe you're thinking, oh, I'll never use it. I'll never use it. But the truth is, you invest in the machine, then you cut up all of your stash and you don't buy any fabric. Right. That's how it goes. You don't like that. See, your, your fabric, that's already your um, investment. That's really, that's really cool. All right. What was that? Sounds hairy, Carrie? It's scary. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Because you want to see a fabric you have to have. Yeah, I know. Okay, but look at that. This is left over from my dime. It's pretty awkward looking. Can't get much out of it, right? Oh, nope. Oh, yeah, you could get stuff out of it on your AccuQuilt. Okay, let's go like this. Okay. So this was the die. Remember the three parts. Oh, uh, you need the mat. Okay, you need the mat. Let's do it. Okay, you always have to have a mat on top. And you kind of tweak to get it in, to get it started. See, even gimps can do this. <laughs> and I'm sad to tell you that if you already have one, but they came out with a new mechanism right in here. Really smooth. Smooth move. Okay, let's see. So you slide this. You slide it. You slide it. Slide it. Slide it. Slide it. There you go. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. Yay! All for the price of your stash. Okay, so you can cut up to six layers. Six layers. Ah, Yvette's interested. Okay, but that's, that's, this is what's really fun. Charm pack. 
We're going to make the, um, this is so fun. I love this little charm pack. Five inch charm packs. And I actually like to, you do keep your fabric with the straight of the grain. And I like to lay it on like that. The important thing is, is that you watch and you see that you have covered it. Okay. And it's close on the tips, but just kind of check and see. Okay, and this is really fun. You take this one for the big one, and then you find the little two and a half inch. Where is it? The mini charms? No. Ta-da! The mini charms. I said no, I'm sorry. Okay, so you want to pick isn't this cute? You want to pick small prints in these little um, two and a half inch packs and just put it on the little one. Ah, so you can do a double whammy. It's not very good to try to do the middle one. Too much overlap, huh? So you just put that right like so. Let's put it a little on the angle. Um, and I also was like you, I go, I don't want an accu quilt, that's really dumb, but boy, when I can do things like this, I put my triangles right sides together and you'd come out and just sew them. Really lots of fun. Um, I thought I would just do applique, but I'm learning that I can do piecing and all kinds of other things that I really like. So out of the charm pack, look at the waist. You couldn't do anything else, right? Mm -hmm. You couldn't do anything else. <laughs> I don't think anyways. And isn't the little one, aren't the little ones cute? Very, very cute. Okay, and so then you don't even have to try to figure out what size of triangles because they have this really cool triangle. The large triangles go with the um, large um, hexi, and I decided that you had less waste if you cut your triangles out of rectangles. I see them. See, Sue's supposed to be assisting me, but she went, went home. She had surgery. She's as gimpy as I am. Okay, these are three and a fourth by five rectangles. By the way, all of your yardage is on page 18 and 19. It's got a little picture there. Tells you of what size to cut these. Up to six layers. It does, um, at six you're gonna get 12 right now. Because if I have six layers and you cut two at this time, okay, so you could put the little one on there too. Doo -doo! And the notches are all cut. Slide, 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 Yep. And there you are. Yay! Yay! Was that nice? <laughs> thank you, thank you. And so they definitely fit. They definitely fit. They're, they're perfect. They're just great for... Just flip those old corners on there. No inset seams, right sides together. Perfect. Good? Oh, Jill already has hers all ready to go. And I know you too. We've had AccuQuilt weekends here. I think they're really a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun, an AccuQuilt weekend where you get to um, come in and try all of the different dyes. You don't have to buy anything. You just get to try it, you know? It's really fun. So, all right. Questions. How are we doing? There's only two more things that I want to show you. So, did you like flower power? Flower power. Okay, you want to take a look at that? Okay, put this away. Ugh. All right. Ah. So if you look at flower power, it is on page do 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 on page 14. Look on page 14. And we gave you a yardage chart to do the little flower power. By the way, Teresa says she can do this in about an hour and a half. 
Me and a how she is. That would be Teresa. Yeah, Teresa. That's Teresa. But anyhow, remember I told you about the colors, the center. You have the center, the star, the petals. Okay, so to do the petals, switch. you need switch. Okay, Eric, wake up in there. Yeah, okay. So you need 18 pink. That's going to be your flower. And then your, your gray is kind of like just a space in between. It's just a collar just to separate your flowers. You need three for your very center of your flower, three flowers. And then you need 30 background triangles and 18 yellow, which becomes your star. All right? Then you have to sew them together into the combinations that you see on page 15. Across the top, it shows you each one of the combinations that you make. And you just press your seams toward the triangle. Look easy so far? Yes. I know it. I know it. It's good. So, We've got all the different combinations. If you want, you can go ahead and change the colors. I decided that I needed patriotic. Oh, it's coming up. So right here, I'm having a blue flower with a yellow star, and I'm going to have a red center. Okay? So now you just start with this one and just lay it out. Let's see if I can do it. See if I can do it. One, two, three. And actually, you can go about, even if you want to start like with the center, the center star, and put the, um, the center, put the stars around it, and then put each one of the other pieces. It seems to fall in place. What do you think? Is it going good? Yeah. Please, please, please. Is it right? I hope. Let's slide it along. One, two, three. Oh, Ryan, you want to do your little thing while I lay this out? Uh, let me go see if it's ready. Go and see if it's ready. I got it. This is long. This is big. Okay, so that was row one. And now I'm just going to go to row two and row two. This looks right. Oh, we're making a star. Mm -hmm. That's right. Is it right? Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yeah. You can see the star coming together. Whoa, look at that. Look at this one. This is really cool. Upside down, you have to eat on that side of the table. <laughs> So if you make the combinations correctly, I think that I had this upside down, but that's okay if we sew it together like that. We got another star going over here, and we got one right on the end. Whoa. All right. That's row two. Okay, no yawning, Jill. I know that we have been on the go <laughs> for days. Okay, and let's see. This is going to go clear over here. And let's see if we can get another star. Oh, I think it has to go like this. How are you coming, all right? Is it, is it stacking up? Yes. You got a star? Yeah, you can see it on the screen. It's easier to look on TV, isn't it? Yeah, it, because whenever you take all the, you know, kind of sew it together and it looks like this. So you're just going to sew all of the um, rows together just like we did. And then sew this. Boop. Another complete star. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's looking good. So, Orion picked up, he, he loaned this really cute, fun dance at Portland. He asked for permission to share it with you. I know you guys need a little exercise, right? So kind of clear your laps. You're going to see one more lesson on binding. 
clear your laps. Okay, and so, okay, just okay, follow so him. Okay, so it's basically, it's a, the quilt maker shuffle, and it just goes through the, the um, I guess, the steps of making a quilt. Right. So the first step is buying your fabric. Buy yes. your fabric. Then you cut it. Cut it. Then you sew. Sew. So. And then you press it. Press it. Then you have to sew again. Sew. So. And then you press it. <laughs> and then you machine quilt it. <laughs> and then you stitch on the binding. Stitch on the binding. And then you show and tell it. Woo! Got okay. it? So this is something that we saw at Quilt Market, and was it was uh, at the Wholesale Trade Show. Uh -huh. And it's by a woman named Gundra. So are you, okay. you going to still I'm gonna the mic? Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. And then hit it, Eric. Oh, hit it. Stand up. Stand up. The quilt maker shuffle. You ready? Do a little strapping. Come on. Ready? Five, six, seven. Let's go. Let's shop. And cut a fabric. Let's go. One, two, three. Ready to stitch. Go. Stitch. And press it. And so. And press. Ready to quilt? Go. Two. Hand stitch. And sew and tell. Everybody over there. Let's go. Shopping. They're having a sale. Cut. Cut. And a sew. One, two, three. And press. No dry iron. Oh. Press. Quilt it. Quilt it. And hand stitch. <laughs> Turn it around. Woo! All the way to the front. From the top. Woo! Yay! Did that feel good? <laughs> we need to learn that, huh? Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm, I know, I couldn't get it off. I can't get the lipstick off. I've been trying all night. Okay, so I was supposed to be picking all this stuff up, but I held a microphone. Okay, that's the first row. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I <laughs> held this together with Wonder Clips. They're wonderful. Wonder Clips? Love them. They're so cool. Love them. Are you doing binding? I'm going to do binding and then we're going to go out of here. That's what we're, that's our last thing. Okay? Do we need to know anything else? Nope. Huh? Show and tell? Show and tell. Prizes. And now we're going to go. Okay, one, two, three. Pick this all up, throw it on the floor. Binding. Two and a quarter inch strips. Cut on the bias. I showed you that last time, right? Okay, so you're going, how the heck am I going to do that outside edge? But it's not hard, honestly. So you know that you take your binding, two and a half inch strips, or two and a fourth inch, fold them in half, wrong sides together, fold it in half. Okay. Um, you need to do, pardon me? Bias on the bias. Yes, you have to do it on the bias. So you don't have a lot of space, a lot along the edge. So I prefer to use my um, quarter inch foot instead of a walking foot. I nearly always use my walking foot. But on this one, I like my quarter inch foot just to go around, and um, the long arm quilter quilted right out to the edge, and it must have been Teresa because I was gone. She just stitched a straight stitch around the outside edge. Okay, I just went ahead and changed my stitch length to um, 3.5, so it's a longer stitch, 
And I'm just gonna start, oop, I didn't want to drop that on the floor. So, I like to just use my needle down and my automatic pivot. Okay, so I'm just going to go slow. You don't pull on your binding. The idea is, is to keep slack in your binding. So I'm going right up into that point and I'm gonna just stop needle down and I'm not gonna do any flipping, anything special. I'm just gonna turn my uh, quilt and not pull little bit of ease right in there and just start. Oh, I just put a pucker in it. Darn! I put a pucker in it, but we'll see what happens. Okay, up to the next point. I'm all like, woo, machine quilt. That's a really fun thing, huh? Okay, so I'm out to the point. <laughs> it's getting late. And it's hot in here. It's hot in here. How come we haven't been running the air conditioner? We are? Oh, I'm all hot. I'm ready to go home and have a drink of water. <laughs> I'm ready to go home and have a drink. Okay, so we're doing good. Okay, I'm up to the pivot point. Turn it around. I just want the bucket list people to know I will be at bucket list tomorrow. Yay, I keep on missing it. I've been gone so much. I'm not going anywhere tomorrow. Okay, so you see how it's going? Yeah? Yep. Not hard? Time for clamps. Cut it. Okay, now comes the wonder clips. So now all you want to do is just fold this to the back. There's no like big tucking in or anything like that. These are wonder clips if you've never used them. I'm going to sew this down by hand. And the great thing about the wonder clips is after you put them in, they rather act as an iron. They press these um, um, seams flat. They press the um, bias flat so that by the time you go in and you're ready to hand stitch, you can pull out the wonder clips and it all lays nice and flat. So, what do you think? That's going around pretty good, huh? Going around there, wanna see it from the front side? Ooh, not bad at all. I have that knack. I'm very talented, huh? <laughs> Anyhow, um, when I do my hand stitching, I like to use a very um, long fine needle. Sometimes they call it applique needle or straw needle. I always use wax thread. It's called silamar so that it doesn't tangle as you pull it through. Silamide? Silamide? Silamide. Silamide. And there's something that I wanted to bring and show you. I always struggle with my thimble. And I've been just putting a red dot right on the tip of my finger. And it's just the right size to just push my needle through. It's a red dot and I think that's just about what it's called. Red dot. <laughs> and the whole combination of the three makes your binding go on like slicing butter. So How's that sound? Let's do show and tell quick. And then show and tell. And then you can say thank you for show and tell. Okay, boss, I'm coming. It's show and tell. So the queen bee has spoken. Who has a quilt? Girl's best friend. Ah, this is yours. Yay! It is very cute. It is very cute. I really like the way you put the little fussy cuts. They are circus tents with little flags on top, um, stars and stripes going through it. Very, very cute. I'm so excited. Nancy has a label on the back. Yay! And look, the, the whole back is all pieced. It's everything is pieced. Do you have a person in mind you're giving this to, Nancy? Oh, your grandson, he's going to love it. It looks very festive, very 4th of July. 4th of July. Okay. <gasps> Do you have one? Linda. Yay, Linda has one. Is it girl's best friend? 
No, I, I, I did an unauthorized project, but I did, I've been wanting to do this for the <laughs> It's okay. I knew. I saw that. Day and night. Come on, show it off. It's beautiful. Oh, that is very nice. Your colors are beautiful. And I can't believe how easily it went together. Thank you. I'll pay you later. <laughs> it is really nice, Linda. Yay! Good job. And now the next person. Yeah? Come on, man. Yvette? I wanted you to know I do finish things. Yay, I'm glad. Well, but oh, oh my gosh, oh, look at this. Oh. Okay. Oh. All right, man. It's hard. Oh, it's hard. Don't close it up. Let us let us feast our eyes on it. I one three times to get uh -oh. right. But, uh, Claudia, yeah, now, Nan, how will I sell books if you go and tell everybody that? No, 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 because it's Leave it open for a minute. last month. She shouldn't have been doing it when she was sick, and I think that was the answer. Oh, uh, did you get to see it enough? I'm sorry. She just, like, we want to admire it a while. So this is, okay, uh, turn it this way. Yes, it looks great. Yes. Well, I didn't want, you know, being behind. Don't, I wanted to don't know say, in there. it's beautiful. It Every you. point matches perfectly. I can see that, Nan. Thank you. <laughs> It is really nice. This is the six inch box from uh, Quilts from Elle's Kitchen. Yep. Uh -huh. Better late than never. Yay. And I love your little rainbow binding. All right, Yvette. Did you guys have your little um, get together? We did, but yeah. a whole lot accomplished. Uh, <laughs> a lot of work on my own. This, this is an authorized quilt, but just not Here. from this class. Yeah, I'm standing and holding it. Okay, I you. You have to talk. I said, this is an authorized quilt, just not from this class. This is Sue's this is, class, right? This is Sue's uh, <gasps> love letters, Civil War love letters. Oh! oh. oh. I'm so bummed. I can't see it. Okay. You must hold that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. That is very nice. And thank you. Oh, yeah. Did she say she was going to give it to you? I didn't hear that. <laughs> that was very nice. Good job. Cool. And this one is. This one is. From this class. Girl's best friend. Yes. It's very different, too. Look at the collars. Wow. Oh, wow. That's very nice. Very, very nice. Yay! I've had these fabrics forever and never had anything to do with them. I had a yard of each one of them. And I thought, you know, I'm going to put those and put them with black and see what happens. It's very nice. Very, very nice. This one. I didn't work on during our retreat. I finished that during our little retreat. But this Good. All in my own time. I didn't see your sister up here. <laughs> <laughs> she started the class at school and was doing homework most of the week. Oh, bummer. We went to three quilt shops and, you know, so we just. He had to buy more fabric yeah. and yada, yada. <laughs> Add to your stash. So we told her she had to make a decision. Whether she was going to quilt or she's going to go to school. <laughs> Guess what? Guess what? She quit the class. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Cool. All right. Thank you. Okay, Sally. I guess talk in the microphone. Sally. I know. I've been trying. Okay. Wow. Look at that. You speak from behind. That is very modern. I know. It's really modern fabric, too. It's very modern fabric, isn't Which it? Which I never use. <laughs> yeah, but it looks really neat. That would because it's for my grandson. Aw. He's a modern kind of guy. How old is he? 
He just graduated from high school, so this should have been done already, but I need This to is going to be great for your grandson. Don't yeah. you agree? Oh, yeah. Very nice. Good job. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying, all right. Oh, look yes. at this. Last okay. Month. Okay, you hold the mic. This is last month. Let's drop it one. down. There Turn we go. Pack. Oh, it's so and pretty. then some matching fabric for a, a skinny border. Yeah. So that's very nice. Because I didn't buy enough. <laughs> it's really cute. It's a directional. At least the fish is directional. Yeah, some of them are. Very, very cute. Very, very cute. All right. Oh, I've got to say it with real sincerity because I mean it. Thank you. I'm glad you came today. I'm going to tell you, I love those hexies, and you got to try it. It's really fun. So have a great 4th of July, and I'll see you next month.